All right, I'm back. We're on page 307, the last page of Notes 21. So this is kind of exciting. And we're going to talk about finding higher order derivatives. So higher order derivatives just mean the derivatives of derivatives. So by far the most famous higher order derivative is going to be the second derivative, f double prime. Excuse me. So that's the way that you say it. Um, there's f prime, f double prime, f triple prime is the third derivative. And then you usually stop saying that and you move to uh, what appear to be exponents. So we'll talk about that in a second. Uh, the second derivative, because it's the most famous, is kind of, uh, it's a little more important for our purposes than other things. We're going to talk a lot more about it in the next set of notes. But uh, it's the rate of change of the first derivative. So you can use the second derivative to decide if the first derivative is increasing or decreasing. And then turn, if the first derivative is increasing, the second derivative must be positive. Both of those mean that the original function is concave up. If the first derivative is decreasing, the second derivative is negative. Both of those mean that the original function is concave down. Concave up means the tangent line is below the curve. Concave up, concave, what, I don't know what I just said there. Concave up means the tangent line is below the curve. Concave down means that the tangent line is above the curve. Um, so one of the ways in which you'll see the second derivative working in the real world is the concept of increasing at an increasing rate versus increasing at a decreasing rate. So think of this scenario, right? So something is happening where uh, in the first day you get a thousand new cases of something, right? So there's a thousand new cases. The next day there's 1200 new cases. So the number of cases is increasing, but it's actually increasing at an increasing rate. There was a thousand, now there's 1200, now maybe there's 1500, then 2000. It's increasing at an increasing rate. If you plot things that are increasing at an increasing rate, you'll go from this, oh my gosh, that's a highlighter. Uh, you'll go from here to here to here to here. It's increasing at an increasing rate, which means that the slope of the tangent line is positive. And as you move from left to right, it's even more positive. So increasing at an increasing rate, generally speaking, is kind of not great. Well, it depends on what you're doing. Um, but if you're talking about people you know, getting sick or uh, something like that, it's not great. Increasing at a decreasing rate, still not great because increasing, but increasing at a decreasing rate. So like once you get 2000 cases per day, the next day, maybe there's only 1800, right? So it's still increased, but it increased a little less. And then the next day, maybe there's only 1400. It's increasing. There's more people who have it, but fewer new people than the previous day. That graph is going to start to look like this and it will level off. So increasing at a decreasing rate, increasing at an increasing rate, concave up. So let me, I will highlight the part that's concave up. Let's go with this. Concave up, increasing at an increasing rate. Then it switches to concave down, where it's increasing, but at a decreasing rate. So this is an application of the second derivative. Higher order derivatives, they have these kinds of applications. Second derivative is really the only one that you'll be talking about the applications of. Um, but let's look at the notation. So the notation's a little weird, but not really. Um, they look a little like exponents, but you put them in parentheses to distinguish them from exponents, right? Uh, if you look at this thing, you want to know that you're not doing y to the fourth power. No, it's in parentheses. That means you're finding the fourth derivative. So to find the fourth derivative, you take your function, use whatever rule you need to find the first derivative. Then you take the derivative, whatever rules you need to find its derivative will give you the second derivative. Then whatever rules you need to find its derivative give you the third derivative, and you just keep going. Um, so that's prime notation. Prime notations, you can do one prime, two primes, three primes, and that's triple prime. After that, you just you just say the fourth derivative, the tenth derivative, the nth derivative. The other notation, differential notation, is a little weirder, right? So where does this come from? So to find dy dx. So dy dx really is d dx of y. So the derivative with respect to x of y. 
and we shorten that to be dy dx. Okay, if I want the second derivative, then what I'm really doing is the derivative with respect to x of the derivative with respect to x of y. Okay, so what is the notation telling you? The derivative, you're gonna take the derivative twice, so that's this, with respect to x twice. So that dx that's in the denominator is its own symbol. It's like, it's a thing. It's like your name is a thing, right? You wouldn't square your name and do like first letter squared, second letter squared, whatever. It'd just be like your name squared. Dx is like that. So it's actually dx squared. And then what are you taking the derivative of? You're taking the derivative of y. So that's why the notation looks weird. The squareds are like not where you expect them to be and not everything gets one. Um, but you can see this notation is like kind of gross. It has its applications. When you get to multivariable, you basically need it. Um, but it's like kind of a gross notation. But whatever, you got to know it, right? So first derivative, second derivative. The templates on your calculator actually use the differential notation. So you'll, you'll see that in action when you try to find derivatives. Uh, all right, so let's do these. Find the first three derivatives of g of x and evaluate them at negative 2. Negative 2? Uh, that's not great. All right, let's, let's just first find the first three derivatives. All right, so g prime is going to be 4x cubed plus 2 plus 18x to the negative third. I'm not, I don't want to plug in negative 2. All right, well, I guess maybe. g double prime is going to be 12x squared minus 54 x to the negative fourth. Nobody wants to do this. Okay. I mean, I don't. I don't know. Maybe at home you're like, yeah, let's do it. I doubt it though. Triple prime. 24x plus 216x to the negative fifth. I'm not doing it. Let's skip this part. Evaluate, evaluate them at negative two. How about we don't? All right, let's just not do that. There's no reason for that. Uh, maybe negative one. How about that? Let's let's change it to that. Evaluate at x equals negative one. All right, that I can deal with. All right, g prime of negative one is going to be negative four plus two minus eighteen. Well, maybe I can deal with it. Minus eighteen, negative twenty-two, negative twenty. G double prime of negative one is going to be twelve minus 54, uh, negative 42. G triple prime of negative one. I don't know, there's no value in this really. Negative 24 minus 216, negative 240. All right, we did it, whatever. Told us to do it, we did it. Find a pattern for the nth derivative of x to the negative first. Use your pattern to find the 98th derivative. Okay, so that's what that means, the 98th derivative. So we definitely want to find a pattern here. So what I'm going to make a table. This table, when you take calc 2, you will recognize. You probably won't remember this, but if you do, you'll recognize it. Okay, it's going to be n and then fn of x. So it's n is the order of the derivative. So the zeroth derivative is the original function, which is kind of weird, um, but that's a thing. So the zeroth derivative is the original function because you haven't applied a derivative yet. So how many times have you taken the derivative? Zero times. It's the zeroth derivative. First derivative, negative x to the negative second. Second derivative, 2x to the negative 3. Third derivative. So I'm starting to see a pattern, but I've done a lot of these in my life. And that's probably why. 4 is 24x to the negative 5. 5, negative 120x to the negative 6. So think about what um, 6 is, right? 6 is the result of doing uh, 1 times 2 times 3. 24 is the result of doing 1 times 2 times 3 times 4. 120 is the result of 1 times 2 times 3 times 4 times 5. I actually think that I can write the nth derivative. Um, so fn of x looks like it's going to be, I recognize these numbers as 
zero factorial, one factorial, two factorial, dot, dot, dot. They're always factorials, right? And it's always whatever n is factorial. So I think there's an n factorial. I think I'm going to get x to the negative. So when n is 2, I need negative 3. When n is 5, I need negative 6. I'm going to say negative quantity n plus 1. But when n is even, so when it's 2 and 4, I need to get a positive. When it's odd, I need to get a negative. So I'm going to say there's also a negative 1. When n is odd, I need negative. So I'm just going to say to the n. OK, so this kind of pattern finding is, in my experience, not super natural for a lot of people. Um, and you might need to practice it. But I think you can do it. So let's see. Oh my gosh. Uh, so the 98th derivative of x, what the 98th derivative is going to be negative 1 to the 98th, positive 1. It's going to be 98 factorial. And then x to the negative 99. OK, I think we got that. Let's check it on the calculator. How can we even do that? Um, let's find out. So I'm going to add a new problem and I'm just, the calculator can do it. So, uh, in the templates, there's the first derivative, the second derivative, and then an nth derivative. Nth derivative, you get to fill in here. So I'm going to do 98 of X to the negative first. This it's probably going to be useless the way it looks. Yeah, not great. Um, not great at all. OK, so what can we do here? Uh, I need to see if that's, so let's just say, does this equal 98 factorial x times x to the negative 99? True, we got it. OK, so it worked. Uh, it worked in a way that, like, I'm not going to make you watch this, but the calculator, not so conveniently, has expanded. Uh, 99, 98 factorial, which uh, that's great, right? So, I mean, that's amazing that it can do it, but it's not like super useful in the grand scheme of things. We could test it out though and like see, so 98 seems a little high, but like we thought the fifth derivative was going to be equal to negative 120 X to the negative six, true. So like our, our pattern works, we, we worked it out. Um, all right, so I'm going to go back to the notes and uh, finish this page, I think, and therefore finish this set of notes. And that's an amazing accomplishment because we have one set of notes to go. We're going up to page 329. I have no idea how much work that's going to be, but we're going to do it. We're going to do it together. Calculate all non-zero derivatives. Ugh, all non-zero derivatives. Okay, so let's think about that, right? So y, if you have y equals x, the first derivative is non-zero. The next derivative is 0, and after that, it's always 0. If you had y equals x squared, it would go first derivative is 2x, second derivative is 2, third derivative, 0 forever. So when it was to the first, we could get the first derivative and then zeros forever. When it was to the second, we could get the second derivative and then zeros forever. If it was the third, it's 3x squared, 6x, 6, zeros forever. Third gives you three non-zero derivatives. I think this is essentially to the fifth, so I think there's going to be five non-zero and then zeros forever. Step one, I'm going to expand because I don't want to do the product rule like 200 trillion times. Probably less than 200 trillion, but I don't want to do it even that many. So y prime dy dx equals 5x to the fourth plus 15x squared. y double prime, which is d squared y dx squared, 20x cubed plus 30x. OK? Y triple prime, d cubed y dx cubed, 60x squared plus 30. OK, and then this term's going to, that, that constant term's going to drop out now. Fourth derivative, you go to the parentheses, or you just keep going forever on this one which is super convenient, 120x, OK? And this is we thought this would happen. The fifth derivative, in parentheses, the fifth dx to the fifth is 120. Every derivative after that will just be zeros forever. 
um, because there's kind of like, you know, there's nothing you can do. This will happen with every polynomial. Eventually the derivatives of polynomials go to zero. That doesn't happen with everything. So for example, if you have y equals cosine. So this is, this is like a question of did you memorize, right? I don't know. So uh, y prime is negative sine of x. The derivative of cosine is negative sine. Y double prime, the derivative of negative sine is going to be uh, negative times the derivative of sine, which is cosine. Y triple prime, the derivative, man, that bird, I don't know if you can hear that. It's a blue jay, I think, just sitting right outside my window, just like going nuts. The derivative of negative cosine is the negative of the derivative of cosine, which is sine. Ah. What's the derivative of sine? The derivative of sine is cosine. And what is going on? Look at that. So this took me back up here. So the fifth derivative will be negative sine, the sixth derivative is negative cosine. The derivatives of sine and cosine are periodic, which is crazy. Periodic functions, periodic derivatives, uh, sine and cosine, like don't go crazy. Tangent, cosecant, secant, cotangent, like eh, it's more complicated. But uh, the derivatives of sine and cosine have a very clear pattern to them, and that's pretty neat. So that's, a, that's just like an introduction to higher derivatives, uh, just so you know the notation, so you're familiar with them, so they don't freak you out. Um, but that's it for notes 21. So we'll be back in the next video. We're gonna start notes 22. Last set of notes, very, very exciting. A lot more to learn, um, but hopefully you are finding these helpful and I will see you then.